Good morning, everyone. I had some. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. All right. <laughs>
And thank you, Teo and Refuge. How lovely to hear you. Welcome, everyone. It's Pentecost Sunday, and that's an exciting day in the church. And I'm glad that you're here. Announcements. Uh, we have a birthday celebration for Pentecost following worship. Uh, so we will be celebrating the church's birthday today. Jean Metzger is in charge of that, and she'll tell us what to do when the time comes. Uh, this is also the day when we collect the Pentecost offering for the church. If you would like to give a little bit extra towards the Pentecost offering, it's mainly directed towards youth and children. 40% of whatever we give actually stays in the church for our own youth ministry, youth and children, 40% uh, or 25% goes to YAVs, that's Young Adult Volunteers, 25% goes to General Ministries with Youth, and 10% to Children at Risk across the country. So that's an opportunity for you today. Normally we have uh, little boxes you can put your coins in, but we decided that really wouldn't work very well over Zoom. So. Uh, just just send a check or do it online. We are still collecting for the uh, Equality Toledo Food Bank. Food banks are being used more and more and more. Anything you can give, uh, whether it's financial or in-kind gifts, they're looking especially for pasta and pasta sauces, I understand. Um, but that, that can be given, and I think today is the last day uh, Christine, are you on? Can you speak to that at all? Yes, actually, um, today technically is the last day, but we will be dropping it all off to them on Tuesday. So, and it won't be till Tuesday mm -hmm. until they open till like five o'clock. So if you can um, get it to us before <laughs> Tuesday at around five, or if you need it picked up, we can still come and pick it up as well. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, I announced last week that if you would like to have a hymnal at home, we are giving away hymnals. Just contact the church office to make sure that they've gotten them pulled down from, from the sanctuary and other areas uh, so that you can have a hymnal at home. And I did want to remind you that next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, and that means it's a communion Sunday. So um, make sure you have, I don't know, a cracker, a Twinkie, something that you want to use for communion, something to drink, uh, that then we can all do communion together. Are there any other announcements that I've missed? Then let us worship God. John? Oh, okay. You're okay, God will pour out the spirit of all flesh, and our daughters and sons, and sons shall prophesy. prophesy. Our old ones shall dream dreams, and our young ones shall see visions. 
and all who come upon the name of the call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Come, let us call upon the name of the Lord. The day came and they were all in one place, in one place, in one place. Being together, being in one space, breathing the same air, saying the same words, had seemed like the most important thing, the most important thing. Then there was a sound, like a rush of wind. Then there was a sound, the sound of things changing. Then there was a sound, and suddenly nothing was the same. Those who were gathered received new languages. Those who were gathered received new dialects. Those who were gathered received new understanding. Those who were gathered received new power. Those who were gathered received the Holy Spirit in a new way. It became clear immediately that what was important had changed. What was important had changed immediately. That was clear. Being in one space was not a priority. Speaking in unison was not a priority. Being all together to breathe the same air was not a priority. The power of the Holy Spirit rearranged their priorities to align them with God's. God's priority of diversity. God's priority of widespread grace. God's priority of neighbors and community. God's priority of a blessed community of all races and nations. God's priority of stepping out, reaching out, being out in the world. The world that God loves. The world that is God's priority. Being aligned with God's priorities, it felt it feels like being on fire. Amen. John, the call to confession. Go. Do not hide your face from us, Lord God. Turn to us as we turn to you in repentance. Hear our confession, forgive our sin, and grant us the new life you promise in Christ Jesus, your Son. Please join me. God of wind and flame, you pour out your spirit on all your children, empowering us both the least and the lofty, to tell of your mighty deeds. We hear the sound and feel the heat, but instead of recognizing your presence among us, we refuse to believe that you proclaim your message to the people we ourselves do not choose. 
Forgive us for attempting to limit your spirit. Silence our cynicism and our fear and possess us with your word and grace. Make us your witnesses, those who break down dividing walls between people and relish the new community made possible through the life and love of Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Spirit. In every breath we take, there is the Spirit. In every word we speak, there is the Spirit. In every heart we touch, there is the Spirit. In every person we welcome, there is the Spirit. In forgiveness, we are given the words to speak, the courage to reach out to others, the open heart to offer others, the breath of life to share with those around us. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Move on to our responsive glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, amen. Amen. <clears throat> we have received God's peace. Let us extend that peace to each other. You may unmute yourselves and pass the peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace, everybody. And also with you. Peace. Peace. Hello, everybody. Peace. 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 Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, 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 it was totally it was a surprise. Oh. <laughs> so I surprised Dennis. Okay. Let us move on to our prayer of for prayer for illumination. Holy Spirit, come again. Fill our hearts with the sound of your breath. Fill our eyes with the brilliance of your presence in each other. Fill our hearts with your good word. Amen. Our scripture reading is from the second chapter of Acts, verses 1 through 21. And John and I are going to read this responsively. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together at one place. Suddenly, a sound from the heaven, like a howling of a fierce wind, filled the entire house where they were, where they were sitting. They, they saw what seemed like to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native language. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered, 
Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this, listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your son, young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day the Lord comes and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, our God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
now is the time I get to tell you about the things you've got to wave. So if you have something red or flame colored to wave, you can do that. And if not, you can just wave, ooh, we've got some pinwheels there. Um, you could also just wave your hands. But what you do is anytime you hear the words, Holy Spirit, you wave. All right, everybody got that? Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is here. It's the church's birthday. Woohoo! What an amazing experience. There they all are, gathered together for over a week now, praying like crazy because Jesus had told them that something's coming. And then everything just goes crazy. Crazy like violent wind. Crazy like tongues of flame. And the Holy Spirit begins to speak through them. This was the birth of the church. And like almost every other birth there has ever been, it wasn't a neat and tidy experience. It didn't happen the way we Presbyterians prefer, you know, decently and in good order. Because when the Holy Spirit shows up, things can get wild. Now, we most often think of the Holy Spirit as a gentle breeze, a whispered urging. We have many words for the Holy Spirit. Comforter, advocate, counselor, breath of God, as in the song, breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew. Calm, gently persuasive like the dove that Christian artists have always used to represent the Spirit. And surely the Holy Spirit can occur in our lives that way, but not always. I love the representation of the Spirit in Celtic Christianity. The image they use is not a nice gentle dove, but a wild goose. And a wild goose is more like the spirit on that ancient Pentecost and what the spirit can be in our lives, honking, squawking, dive bombing us, roaring like a tornado, flaming like fire so that we pay attention. I don't know about you, but I can ignore a dove. Cool, cool. But a wild goose, squawk, squawk, when the Holy Spirit wants to get our attention, the Spirit honks, pushes, gets in our faces. The role of the Holy Spirit on that first Pentecost and on this Pentecost is to disrupt our lives to show us that we are not in charge, God is, to squawk us into action when we've gotten comfortable or complacent or stuck or scared. And oh, don't we need the Holy Spirit in this country today? For this is a difficult time, a frightening time political dysfunction, racial inequality, a deadly and uncontrolled disease, a devastating blow to the economy, people trying to protest peacefully in order to be seen and heard in their grief and anger, and others smashing windows, burning buildings, wreaking chaos. The old world is dying, and the new world struggles to be born. Now is the time of monsters. That was the first line Friday night of Heather Cox Richardson's online newsletter. Richardson is a professor of American history in Boston. And I, I will say, if you want a clear view of what's going on in this country from a historical perspective, I highly, highly recommend her. The old world is dying and the new world struggles to be born. Now is the time of monsters. That's a quotation from a man named Antonio Gramsci, who wrote from prison under Mussolini in the 1930s. And oh, doesn't it resonate today? We grieve. We lament. We wail and sob. We protest and we pray, and the Holy Spirit is right there with us. Richardson ended that same letter this way. 
Chaos does not have to destroy us. At this crazy, frightening, chaotic moment, it is possible to reach across old lines and create new alliances, to re-emphasize that most Americans really do share the same values of economic fairness and equality before the law, and to rebuild a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. The old world is certainly dying. The shape of the new world struggling to be born is not yet determined. Holy Spirit, may we do that work, that work of reaching across old lines and creating new alliances. May we be part of that healing, that shaping of a new world. You see, we play two roles in the Pentecost story. The first is that we, we are like the visitors to Jerusalem. Parthians and Medes, blacks and whites, indigenous and immigrants, Republicans and Democrats, progressive Christians and fundamentalists, we come from our own bubbles, our own accumulations of values and fears, saints and demons, stories and truths. Across our bubbles, we don't speak the same languages, but the miracle of Pentecost is that through the Holy Spirit, we can all hear the message of the word. Thanks be to God, the Holy Spirit keeps squawking at us, honking and sometimes dive bombing so that we pay attention for the Spirit speaks in the languages of all our bubbles. The disciples spoke the word, the love of God through Jesus the Christ, and through the Holy Spirit, that word cut through the differences, burst the bubbles. And those who welcomed this message were baptized, we read a little later in Acts 2, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Our second role is to heed the coo coo nudging and the squawk squawk pushing of the Holy Spirit so that we proclaim the mighty works of God, the love of God for all people across all our differences in words that others can hear and in acts that show them God's love in ways they can understand. In these days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young will see visions, your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Through the Holy Spirit, we have the power to prophesy and to shape the new world that is coming, to reach across old lines and to create new alliances, to work for economic and political and social justice for everyone, to create a world in which no one need declare bankruptcy because of medical bills, a world in which no family has to balance putting food on the table and paying the rent, a world in which no one of any race or color or sexual orientation or gender identity or immigration status or religion, no one need fear for their life when driving or bird watching or sleeping in their bed. Come, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, amen. All winds that blow, gusts that bend the sapling low, gales that heave the sea in waves, steerings in the mind's deep caves. Aim your breath with steady power on your chest.
Amen. Thank you, Teo. This morning, I'd like us to use for our confession of faith some words from the Sarasota Statement. The Sarasota Statement was written by a group of Presbyterian leaders in early 2017. Um, if you want to know more about the Sarasota Statement, uh, go to the Next Church website. Uh, Next Church is a a growing movement of people within the PC USA who are saying, what's next for the church? It, they, they do some of the most exciting work in, in, the, in the Presbyterian church. I've chosen this because it, this is a confession that speaks directly to racism and, and privilege. So will you say this with me? We are people of hope who confess Jesus Christ is Lord over a kingdom in which no one is hungry, violence is no more, and all suffering is gone. All sit together around a shared table. Wolves and lambs enjoy each other's company, and every tear is wiped away from every eye. We trust our Lord and Savior who calls disciples to love unconditionally who confronts brutality by refusing to take arms, and who defies racism by forming a community out of every tribe, people, and nation. Jesus aligns with people who are poor, meek, persecuted, and reviled, and calls the church to do the same. To be a Christian is to be continuously undone and remade by a savior who encounters us in ways we might not expect, through a collection of people we might otherwise reject, screen, or censor. We trust that God is always at work in our world and in our lives, giving us joy and calling us to be faithful in Jesus' vision of the kingdom. We commit to continuously rededicate ourselves to this work and strive with hearty faith to live this kingdom on earth, proclaiming Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Amen. This is the time when we lift our prayers to God as the body of Christ. I want to remind you that um, Everything we say here is, is broadcast on Facebook Live and later on YouTube, uh, just so you remember that as you make your requests. I did get a request this week uh, from Kathy Alcaday saying that Mike's brother died unexpectedly this week. So prayers for the Alcaday family. What are their prayers? Sherry, I see your hand. Uh, prayers for Mary Palmer. She has gone back in the hospital. She has sores that are not healing. Uh, her kidney function is seriously low, and they found a blood clot behind her knee. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Okay, speak up. I can't necessarily see all the hands. Thanks this morning. It's uh, Denny Joe's 77th birthday, and tomorrow is Rusty Balmer's. I think it's the 69th. I think it's 69. <laughs> <laughs> Happy, birthday Happy birthday to, to, to you. you. Happy birthday to you. To you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Denny Joe. Happy birthday to you. Hey. That may be the worst rendition of it. <laughs> Mitch Miller. It's pretty hard to do any kind of joint singing over Zoom, isn't it? So happy right. birthday to Denny, Joe, and to Rusty. I see a hand, Tom. Yes. I think I saw in the bulletin that it's Raymond's birthday, too. Um, Schultz. So happy birthday, Raymond. Yes, happy birthday to Raymond Schultz. Mm. Raymond Horvath. 
Raymond, Raymond Horvath. Horvath. Yes, Thank you. right. I was going to say that didn't that wasn't right. Thank you. <laughs> Other prayers. It it's really good to see your faces, folks. Mary, I see your hand now. You're yes. muted. Yeah. Mary, you need to unmute yourself. Okay. There we go. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, of, um, the um, members of my garden club, who's um, in her early to mid 80s, um, just found out that she has a mass on her in her lung and she's not doing so well. And um, they haven't detected what it is yet, but um, I'd like prayers for Nancy so that um, she could, um, you know, get better. Prayers for healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Thank you. I have, I have a, uh, a, Praise, good news, whatever you want to call it. My, my elder daughter has Crohn's disease, which is uh, uh, an uncurable disease. And uh, the medication that she takes uh, basically kills her immune system because in Crohn's, your immune system attacks your, your own body. So in any event, um, I've had to be very, very careful about my quarantining uh, to be able to just spend time with her. So today I'm going over there um, and without a mask and with hugging and everything with her and my three grandsons. So praise mm -hmm. God that um, our family's getting back together. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I have one other thing that I heard about, and that is that... Uh, Charlotte's mom is talking like a like crazy. Mm -hmm. oh, good. <laughs> All right. Praise God. Tom. I'd like to just uh, remember Larry and Sharon, and I've forgotten their last name. Yeah. Young. Young. Um, Young. Uh, you know they they were just faithful members for so long, and we miss them so much. But uh, prayers for Sharon, especially, and, and for Larry. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Prayers for Anthony Bell. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Prayer. Prayers. prayers for our country. Lord, in your mercy. Come, Holy Amen. Spirit. Hear, hear our prayer. I would like us to pray for all the moms and grandmothers and grandfathers and brothers and sisters and uncles of black men and women that uh, are up at extra hours of the night worrying about their kids, their siblings, their grandkids yeah. uh, in ways that frankly I never imagined and still can't fully comprehend. Um, we've yep. got a lot of work to do as a, as a country. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Cheers. Let us pray. Lord of all, as we are unable to gather in one place, we grieve our inability to sit beside one another, to sing together, pass the peace in person and hug. Even as we lament what is lost, we rejoice that nothing separates us from your love. And there is no barrier that can prevent the Holy Spirit's coming to us. United in Christ, bound by the Spirit, our community is real and strong no matter where we are. Confident in your promise to never leave us alone, to hear us when we knock and give to us when we ask, we pray for those we have named before you and others on our hearts and minds. Send the Spirit's winds of your comfort to surround those who mourn. Stay close to those unable to be near to those they love. Grant rest to the weary and give hope to those on the brink of despair. 
And Lord, O oh Lord, kindle the Spirit's flame of reconciliation between those long estranged and peoples who call each other enemies, especially in our country, in our cities. Unleash the Spirit's power to bring justice to the oppressed. Possess us with your Spirit so that we cannot abide the exploitation of others, of the weak, or the neglect of the vulnerable. Let your spirit loose in your church so that we can be bearers of your love in the world. Come, Holy Spirit, engulf this frightening, maddening season with the life-giving, mercy-granting, joy-completing, justice-rolling deeds of our God. Open our mouths so that our lips may proclaim God's praise. Direct our actions so the world will know we are Christ's followers by our love. Make us one so we can be ambassadors of reconciliation. Show us your vision and empower us to make your divine dreams our earthly reality. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen One of the things we do together and apart, separately and as one, is to support the church financially. I want to thank you for your continued support. Um, if you are behind or if you'd like to give more, you can mail a check, you can give online. Uh, any of those are welcome. And then let us pray our prayer of dedication together. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, your spirit rests upon us and drives us out to proclaim the gospel even in times of danger. You grant us your vision and make your dreams our own, especially in a world gone mad. You enlist us as ambassadors for no less than Christ, who stands with people who are poor, meek, persecuted, and reviled. Take our gifts as signs of our trust and symbols of our gratitude. Bless them and use them to tell your mighty deeds throughout the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Dennis?
Amen. And now, with the power of the Holy Spirit, go into the world and prophesy. Spread God's word, God's love, in what you say and in what you do, that we may be part of the reconciliation of this world gone mad. And know that God is with you always, creator, redeemer, and that squawking, nose dive bombing Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, my friends. Amen. The worship is over. Let the service begin. Aha. Thank you very much, Jean.